Hi, this is Thomas LaFoe from the Digital Media Center at the Mississippi State University Libraries, and in this tutorial we will be taking a look at creating pivot tables. To create a pivot table, click on the first line of data. Here you can see that this spreadsheet is quite long, but contains no blank spaces between the first and the last lines of the data. Click Insert, select Pivot Table, and verify that your data is selected here in the Select Table or Range section. Make sure New Worksheet is selected and click OK. This creates a new worksheet and inserts a blank pivot table. On the right side of the screen, you will see the Pivot Table Fields Task Pane. Here, you can click and drag the different fields to the different columns, rows, values, or filters. Here, I will add Customer to the columns and Product to the rows. Once I've set up my rows and columns, I can then choose which values I'd like displayed in the table. Here, I'll select Total Cost and drag it to the Values field. Now we can see that the sum total of costs has been added to the table. To change this value, click on the sum total of cost and select value field settings. Here you can change how the field is summarized. To see the total number of orders, change to count. Click OK. And now the pivot table will display each entry in our data. I will change this back to sum and also show you the number format option. Clicking on number format will allow you to format the value in the values field. I can select accounting and click OK. Click OK one more time. And now I have the formatted sum of total cost. Additional fields can be added to the rows and columns as well. Here I'm going to select the date and drag it to the Columns field. In earlier versions of Excel, the date grouping is not automatic. Right-clicking on the date and choosing Group, I can change how this data is grouped. In previous versions of Excel, dates were only entered as days. This shows each unique date in the data set. But right-clicking on these dates and selecting Group then allows me to change different grouping methods. As you become more familiar with pivot tables, you may find that switching the columns and the rows produces a better result. Here I'm going to change the rows to Customers and also add my Years, Quarters, and Date and add my products to the Columns field. Filters can also be applied. Here, if Customer is added to the filters, at the top of the pivot table, I can select which customer I'd like to display. To remove this filter, simply remove it from the task pane, and here I can add Customer back to my rows. The plus and minus buttons found throughout the table also let you collapse or condense your pivot table. When a pivot table is selected, pivot table tools appear at the top. We have an Analyze tab and a Design tab. From the Design tab, subtotals and grand totals can be added or removed. Quick formatting can also be applied using pivot table styles or by checking the boxes in the style options. The Analyze tab contains many options for analyzing fields, including slicers, which are visual filters that can be applied to your pivot table, and also shortcuts to show and hide your field list, your plus and minus buttons, and also your field headers. Once you have a pivot table, creating a pivot chart is easy. Select your table and click on Pivot Chart in the Analyze tab. Click OK. And now you can size and style this pivot chart how you see fit. Filters are present for quick filtering. And the plus and minus signs in the bottom right corner will let you drill down into the data. 
I hope you have found this tutorial on pivot tables helpful. For more information, handouts, and tutorials, please visit our website at guides.library.msstate.edu/dmc. Thanks for watching.